Not sure if many of you know, but we do have a virtual tier within the Design Coven virtual pro member tier, which includes three virtual meetings a month where we set intentions. We do group coaching. So bring all your questions. We answer those questions and you get to learn from other people going through the same struggles as you. We also do a business practice meeting. So we'll have somebody on to share a business practice that we can all benefit from. And then we also do a product training. So getting a sustainable, eco-friendly line to come on and share who they are so that we can be supported with other like-minded businesses. And if you're not quite ready for pro, you can always join our free community where you will connect with other like-minded holistic interior designers. You don't have to be an interior designer if you are kind of just dabbling or you're aspiring or you're looking into this field. We invite everybody from all journeys and we don't, again, have to be a designer. You don't have to have a degree. We're just a beautiful community of like-minded people looking to create healing spaces, not just for ourselves, but for our clients and future clients. Come join us at designcoven.com forward slash join. You're listening to the Holistic Interior Design Podcast. This is a podcast that guides you as a new or inspiring independent interior designer navigating your entrepreneurial path. Here with my over 20 years experience, I will share my holistic approach to design with intention and ancient practices, including feng shui, all incorporating mind, body, and spirit into my design projects. You will also learn from seasoned interior designers as they give strategies and insight of how they built their businesses and continue to work in the field. Together, we will discover supportive trade partners, new ideas, creatives, and inspiring artists from around the world. I'm your host, Rachel Lorraine Crawford. Welcome back. Today, it's a solo episode where I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper into feng shui. We had a beautiful conversation with my feng shui teacher, Amanda Sophia, on Tuesday, so I thought I would add a little bit more information um, to that recording. I'm also going to be doing a feng shui series where we dive into each of the different areas of feng shui on the Bagua map, which I will go over shortly. So today is going to give you a little bit of feng shui 101, get you adjusted to what the idea is of feng shui, and then we'll dive in deeper um, week by week. So before we start, I'm going to go ahead and ring our bell to set the intention of creating sacred space, calling in our um, higher self into the present moment. And then of course, lighting a candle, connecting us with the energy of fire, creativity, spirit, my favorite elements here. Got a beeswax candle going. And I do have a tea that I'm drinking. Of course, it's Paru's um, Earl Grey with lavender, cornflower, and bergamot oil. It's got a gorgeous um, rust sort of color to it. It's really, really beautiful. Reminds me of the sun setting. And the lavender on this is very... um, very floral and very present. So if you're not a lavender person, I wouldn't recommend this, but if you love lavender, um, this is definitely the tea for you. It's a really beautiful twist on Earl Grey. And then we do have our card that I'm pulling today for us. And I'm obsessed with this new deck that I just received. It's the Radiant Crystal deck by um, Carrie Snook and her business is called Bouchette Design. And her cards are just absolutely stunning. The cover on this on the box is some beautiful flowers with crystals um, together. And her deck features crystals with flowers, which is really a beautiful combination. What's really neat about her deck is you don't need to have a guidebook. She's got the crystals on the front of the card and then on the back she has a corresponding chakra, a vibration number, the astrological signs, Uh, affirmations, the energies, and then of course a flower um, correspondence, which is really cool. 
So I'm gonna pull all of us a card for today, connecting us with the energy um, for this episode. And we have Sunstone. And then the words below is empowerment, freedom, and originality with Sunstone. Absolutely stunning. Uh, the vibration is the number one, the primary sh um, chakra is sacral. We've got Leo and Libra in this sunstone sign or crystal. Affirmation, I shine from the inside out and full of joy. Her energies that she is uh, corresponding this to is sunstone drawn, draws in luck and good fortune. It helps clear our chakras, heightens our intuition and urges our inner light to shine outward. It's cheerful nature increases vitality, encourages independence, and strengthens our courage. <sighs> so good. And the flower is the tassel flower, and that's for creativity, joyful, and brightness. Stunning. Um, yes, this, this deck is just one that I'm absolutely over obsessing over, and I will be pulling many more from this beautiful um, array of cards and I'm going to be pulling this for our Patreon group um, which we meet on the first Tuesday of every month so if you're in Patreon I'm pulling crystal cards for us on Tuesday and if you're not a member you can always sign up the link is in our show notes we have we have fun over there okay so we're getting into feng shui so feng shui means wind and water. So we're connecting with the energy of life when we connect with wind and water. Those are both two elements that are always moving, always changing. Um, and, and when I'm talking about feng shui here, I am diving into the classical feng shui. That's the schooling that I was taught in. I was taught in um, also flying stars, which is very, uh, can get very complicated. We're not gonna get into the complications of that. We're really just kind of touching the surface here with some feng shui principles. There are three principles of feng shui and they say that everything is alive. So in feng shui, we believe that everything has a spirit. We believe that everything is connected. All of us that are here listening, um, everyone that's sort of on this planet, we're all connected somehow and that everything is changing. So things are always, always changing. If you think about the seasons changing, weather's changing, our bodies, um, emotions are always changing. So there's always this change that's happening, okay? And with feng shui, uh, this is really a technique that we get to use to shift the energy of the chi. And chi is just another name for energy. So when we use feng shui, we're intentionally shifting the energy of the chi so that it moves in a way that is supportive for the people that are living there. So at times we might want a lot of like stagnant energy to move faster or if energy is moving too fast, we want to slow that down. So there are three different kinds of luck. There's our heaven luck, which is sort of our horoscope. Um, you know, the signs that we we're born into, the times that we we're born into. And then we have human luck, which is our own responsibility, our own efforts that we are here to overcome obstacles and improve our situations with positive thinking and creative ways of, of overcoming um, these dilemmas and challenges. And then we have earth luck. And earth luck is where feng shui comes in because that's manipulating the energy in our environments. That's that's being able to change how we're um, receiving energy. And the goal of feng shui is to create a, a space that is energetically um, supportive in our earth luck energy. So wanting to move that, that chi, wanting to get things going and having things being supportive. So with chi, we're working with a couple different energies. We're working with energy of yang, which is gonna be our outward energy. It's gonna be more of the masculine in, in a way of it's being more showy, more outgoing, um, louder energy. And then we've got a yin energy, which is gonna be more subdued. It's going to be a bit more quiet. It's gonna be slower and it's gonna go within. So we have that, that yin energy of the outside and the yin energy of kind of the internal. Um, and we're balancing these energies out. And with feng shui, we are working with different elements. So, and, and again with that, the elements balance themselves out. So we make sure that each of the spaces are containing these elements. So I'm just gonna go through the elements in general in this series. We're gonna dive into each one of the elements in, in more depth and really talk about um, more of their attributes. But 
the energies that we would be working with at feng shui is going to be the element of wood which is the energy of growth so when i talk about wood i'm talking about bringing in live plants um, plants that are going to reflect what's happening with our health so we're going to want to make sure that the plants that we're bringing into our home are alive and healthy and are taken care of because that's going to represent our own internal health within our bodies. Metal is an energy of fabrication, uh, man-made energy. If you think of business and trade, it's just going to have this, this energy of exchange and um, commodities. Then we've got water and water is an energy of abundance in, in the way of, of money. It's also in the realms of emotions. Water is going to play, um, and we always want to make sure the water is, is nice and clean, especially if you have a fountain, making sure that it's nice, clean uh, energy because it, it does represent the flow of life force energy. And then we have fire, which is a transformational energy. It's, a, it's an energy of creation and destruction at the same time. And then we have earth energy, which is going to ground us and balance us and keep us um, centered. So those are the, the five elements that we use in feng shui and they all have their part in balance and then we get into what's called the bag wall map so the bag wall map is really a map that we can place on top of our floor plans to kind of get an idea of nine different areas in our life they represent the nine areas so i'm just going to go through each of those areas the direction that they're in so you can kind of get an idea of how these areas can can reflect um what's happening within our lives and within our bodies. So at the center, the center is our core. So the center is going to reflect health, unity, self-love, self-acceptance, and gratitude. I love putting um, altars of health into the center of our homes. So this is really going to show that beautiful unity and connection, and it's, and it's connected to the element of earth. So this is our center, this is our grounding, this is our foundation. And when we go to the north, this is going to represent our life journey and our career, and the element there is going to be water. So really being in flow of all of that and making sure that, in, and typically we like to have the front door in this space because that's the opening of this chi, the opening of these opportunities and life journey uh, path and then if we go to the opposite side that's going to be the south so the south is for fame it's for reputation and recognition and that element is fire so that's our light that's how we are seen in the world that's how we shine and if we go to the west we're going to go into the space of creativity uh, inner child new beginnings fertility and that's going to connect us with the realm of metal so that's the element of metal and then if we go to the east just opposite of west that's going to be our family and community space so i love having ancestor altars in this space um, if possible i love having dining tables in this space it really connects our family here or your family room could be in this space which would be really beautiful and the element there is wood so bringing in that life energy of plants and now if we go to the um, southeast corner that's going to be the space of prosperity wealth and abundance so that's our money corner and everyone always asks where's the money corner what do i need to do there and in that space that's connected to wood so definitely bringing in some beautiful plants that are growing you can bring in crystals into that space um, with all these spaces, it's going to be really important to be clutter free and not have anything in that space that's going to stop energy. Uh, if we go to the opposite side of that southeast corner and go over to the southwest corner, that's where we have love relationships. Um, our love life is in that corner. So that's going to be the element of earth. So connecting down into the the earthly um, elements. I love putting crystals in there. Rose quartz is my favorite for that area of the home. And if we go to the northeast corner, we're going to head into the world of knowledge, self-cultivation, wisdom, intuition, and meditation. This is a beautiful space to have a meditation room or to sit with intention. And this could also be, you know, just the corner of the space. Uh, the corner of the room that you're working in but as a whole that's going to be the area that's going to cultivate all of that beautifulness and then we have on the opposite of that the north west corner and that's for helpful people and travel 
So that's going to be a space if you're looking for a mentor to come in, somebody to help you in your business or to help you um, get to the next level. It's also for travel. So if you're looking to be traveling later this year, or maybe you want to travel for work or, or pleasure, that's going to be the area that you're going to want to activate for, for travel. And when I'm working with somebody with feng shui, I'm, you know, I'm asking them what, what parts of the home or do they feel stuck? and or what parts of their lives do they feel stuck because there's a huge correlation to both of them and then I, again always asking the intention of what is it that you're wanting to bring in and then we can look at their home look at the space see what's see what's stuck i can read a lot about different um, parts of the house just by looking at it reading into the energy um so if you really want to tap into feng shui a bit more and you want to get energy flowing i suggest removing a ton of clutter clutter is the biggest hurdle to overcome i feel like with so many people i am in the same boat and uh, i feel like like my dining table clutter just kind of accumulates there like we drop things off things get shifted and they just get dropped in that that space so if you do want to shift the energy i suggest decluttering like crazy it gets things moving it gets you pumped up it gets you motivated um, to go to the next thing. So it's all about shifting the energy. And if you just need to shift the energy really fast, I recommend opening your doors, your windows, and just letting in this beautiful fresh air, setting the intention for new opportunities, setting the intention for clearing out the space. That's kind of where I'm at with feng shui right now, just to kind of dip your toes in there, get you kind of thinking about the energy of your home. I like to think of, you know, a river or a stream going, and whenever it kind of has a bend or there's like a weird little, you know, alcove, the water tends to get stuck there and then like algae starts growing and weird stuff's happening in there. Um, so it's like, you know, the corners of our home, different little areas, different little pockets are going to, are going to gather the stagnant energy. So it's all about clearing and moving the energy and setting intention into the space. And that, that's it for now. We will tap in next week with more insight on these different areas with these different elements and, and dig a little bit deeper and give you some other tips but but for now i think this is a good tiptoe into the feng shui world and i remember the first time i learned about feng shui or even heard about feng shui was in design school and just the idea of energy in our homes and working with energy in our homes to benefit us uh, was fascinating and I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to be able to really study and dig in here and to practice for so many years through my design clients and just observing you know the wonders uh, of energy and homes and how we can transform them to make our lives a better place. You've been listening to the Holistic Interior Design Podcast. If it's one that you have been enjoying, please share with anyone else that you think can benefit from this knowledge and leave us a five-star review that helps us get seen and found by other new and aspiring interior designers. And if you're looking for mentorship, I invite you to join our club here at the Design Coven. It's a bridge between school and real life interior design we get in much deeper there we have virtual and in-person events so everyone is welcome you don't need to have a design degree to be part of it just an interest in holistic interior design i also want to thank our editor marcy ferry and lastly kinseth thibodeau who is our music composer. Until next time, be well and we will see each other soon.